Oh, I've got a £50 tip. Someone came out of my show and gave me £50. Arriving in Edinburgh was, um, I feel like I arrived the same way Eddie arrived in coming to America. I was looking around like I was somewhere new. It's totally the same as London. But I was still like, oh my God, this is Edinburgh. Like a right dickhead. <laughs> the fringe for a new comedian, I think it's quite scary at first. I would say the first week is quite, oh my gosh, there's so much happening. You almost catch whiplash from just looking around at all the happenings. But after you get into a stride, then it becomes nice and then it becomes like this really exciting place, like a fort park and there's rides everywhere and they're all free and there's no queues and it's, yeah, that's how I saw it anyway. <laughs> maybe I should grow up, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think the fringe is important to comedians at the start of their career because you do get the option to build the muscle faster. So you know like normally in, with a gig, you're probably waiting two or three days to get one or waiting for the next weekend to get a gig. In Edinburgh, you can literally fix what you broke the next gig, which is, could be like five minutes away or 10 minutes, you know, you can, at max, you're waiting an hour to fix something. So you can really churn through a good piece of material in one day, and then you've got the whole month to do so much more. So I think it's good for that. I'm not a fan of people rushing to debut, um, but I think you should definitely go and flex the muscle, work the muscle. It's like a gym, just go every day and see what you can do. My best Edinburgh Fringe memory was probably, oh, I've got a 50 pound tip. Someone came out of my show and gave me 50 pounds. Now, I would like to think I was 50 pounds funny. I'm gonna be honest, I would have taken 10. However, he gave me a red note. I mean, you're supposed to savor it, spent it, but it was, it was nice to have. <laughs> that was a good memory. I don't, the audience at Edinburgh Fringe, I don't think you can have one answer. Everyone's so different and they come from all over the place, the world. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, you've got your um, your BBC4 audience who you know you can't swear in front of too much because they, you know, they're very both. Um, and then you've got your, I've just come from London. If you don't make me funny, I'm gonna stab you, audience, in which you've got to be really walkers. So it depends on who's there. I would love to say I get myself hyped up and ready for a gig. I think on the way to a gig, depending on the type of gig. So if I think it's a, um, a quite, you know, the audience are gonna be middle class, I'd listen to a podcast, it sounds weird, but I'd listen to a podcast because then I feel like really middle class. And then if I'm going to a gig where it's gonna be quite rowdy, I'll listen to like some garage music or I'll just get myself in the zone for that energy. Otherwise, it'll be the wrong energy that I walk into the room with. I would hate to get to Bath having to listen to some garage and be like, oh my God, how you did? They would die. They would think I just took loads of drugs and came on stage, so yeah. <laughs> I don't have any real, you know, some of my colleagues do boxing or they do push-ups. Yeah. yeah, he boxes, yeah. <laughs> Babes, listen, because Tra I always think of Travis when that question comes and I'm like, Travis has a full on Mike Tyson moment before going on stage. And I'm, in my mind, I'm always like, Babes, are you not scared of sweat patches? Like, why are you? He's fully like this. I'm like, who is there? And why are you punching the material before? What happens? <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I just sit there and I'm just like looking around the room at the weirdos. <laughs> stage and the stand up it feels good. You've got, there's a lot of power that comes with being on the stage, just you, microphone, but you are commanding the room. And I enjoy sometimes standing in one place and commanding the room. I find the bigger the venue, don't move, because then they're forced to watch you. Um, it helps if your content is funny, but the best bit is don't move, because when I find comics walk around and move around too much, not that you can't enjoy it, because you know, Lee Evans, who didn't enjoy that, but sometimes they're walking for no reason, then they start wandering, then the audience gets the idea that they can wander as well, and then in their minds, they don't even listen to you, they're just like, why are they wandering? What are they doing? You know? So either walk with purpose or stand still. My dad's a joker, so that's where I get it from. I say joker, asshole. look at my name. But that's where I get it from. <laughs> so I, I don't think anyone's shocked. I think maybe they're shocked that it's a career that I, I'm self-employed with. Do you know what I mean? They still expect me to have a side job and this be like a little hobby. But I don't think they're shocked that I'm doing it. Um, yes, the only thing I could say to young comedians is just be yourself. That's it, you get so caught up in, oh, I like this person, I'm gonna be influenced, and then you change your mind two minutes later, and then they understand your materials. Just, just be yourself. It's easier said, but just be yourself.